Welcome to the Bad Roman Podcast. On this show, we talk with veterans, community leaders, Christians, and non-Christians as we explore the entanglement of Christians with the state. The Bad Roman Project was created out of the firm belief that as Christians, we are called to follow Christ, not the state. Here is your host, Craig Hargis. Hey, folks. Today, I'm joined by Ari Spivey and Brian Grant from Fell Kingdoms. Fell Kingdoms. The Bad Roman Project. Let's go. Yeah. Left, right, left, right, left. We got our right. marching orders, man. Left, right, left, right. We'd rather left, serve God than right, serve Caesar, you feel me? Right. I'm yeah. just trying to live what he said. We reached out to Ari about doing some music specific to our project, and we couldn't be more excited with what he came up with. When the track was finished and he sent it to us, I immediately started sending it to friends and the reviews came back fast and furious. Here are some of the quotes. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Who's the artist? That is fire. As my kids would say, that is slapping. <laughs> Excellent. That's bumping. And even those who aren't big fans of hip hop agree that it flows really well. Anyone who knows me knows that I mainly listen to country music. But what some might not know is that I am a huge fan of old school rap, such as artists like Tupac. And the music Ari puts out has that same feel. He has a really cool sound. Ari, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And and then, Brian, you give us a little background of yourself, and then we'll get into it. Well, my, my name is Ari. Um, I am, I'll be 26 Am I twenty? Yeah, I'm twenty six. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be twenty six. It uh, only happens when you get old, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> it, it just it just hits me. But I'm I'll be twenty six in October. I'm married to my beautiful wife Maria. We've been married for in January. It'll be four years. We've been together for about. Oh man, I hope she doesn't listen to this. She. Uh, <laughs> We, we've been together for at least six, maybe seven years. I'm gonna send this straight to your wife. <laughs> yeah, we've been together. We've been together for a while. Um, we have uh, we have a little a little sprout on the way, Camila. She'll. I saw that man. That's cool. Yeah, she'll be here. She'll be here in like maybe September, like late September. And so um, I rap. I I, I kind of sing sometimes. I produce music. I, I do some sometimes I I'm, I'm I also uh do photography do videography a lot of different a lot of different things so I'm just a uh I'm just a hodgepodge of a lot of different other a lot of different things that's cool Brian won't you tell us a little bit about yourself well my name is Brian Grant um 24 I have a beautiful wife I just married back in November and actually August because we had a early wedding and another one but um we have a daughter that just turned four months and been a part of fail kingdoms for about almost two years now joined with re and uh, i really got saved about three years ago almost and was really on the bad page with god i really didn't want to go the that route anywhere um but anyway Long story short, yeah. Thanks to Ari and um, the help of Fell Kingdoms and whatnot, I, I got on the path that I am to now. And that's yeah. awesome. Congratulations on your new marriage. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So we'll, we'll get into Fell Kingdoms here a little bit later in the show, but I want to talk to both of y'all about your path towards anarchy. This, this this conversation is something I love having with with other anarchists, and because I love hearing their stories of how they got there. Because I've got my own story, and my story, you know, is 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 similar to a lot of anarchists that you see. But there's you know there's other stories that come along that that aren't aren't like mine, and I love hearing them. And so, Ari, so where were you at uh, politically? When you first started getting interested in politics, what was what was your background with politics? Like, what were you like, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, Independent? Yeah, I would say I was a I was a textbook Democrat because everybody else around me was a textbook Democrat. If you know about specifically the black community, we tend to overwhelmingly vote for Democrats about 98 percent of the time. And so for me, I just sort of adopted the politics of my family, of my parents, of everybody around me. 
And so that's where I was at first when I first got into politics, when I really began to like be conscious of it. So that's where I was. So what changed? I mean, what, what there, there ha- something happened. I know what happened with me, but something happened where you started waking up to being like, all right, something's wrong here. You know, mine was with like when Donald Trump was nominated, like I was a party line voting Republican since George W. Bush. And I would not stray from that. But once Donald Trump was nominated, I was like, man, something's wrong here. I can't get on board with this. And I started, you know, my own little path. But what happened with you? Something something had to have happened to get you to start changing your mind or kind of waking up to what was going on. Yeah. So it was I, I mean, it honestly, my my you know, my watershed moment, it had nothing to do with politics. So it was my it was actually my first year in um in college. And long story short, one of my professors was an atheist and she she was really you know, challenging me about my faith. And so it got so bad to the point because I, you know, I didn't have people around me to tell me that, yo, there's actually good evidence for Christianity and all this different type of stuff. So it, it it got to a point where I just, I apostatized and I wasn't a Christian for, you know, for maybe like a year and a year or so. And I didn't tell anybody, but long story short, um, I found apologetics, you know, I, I, I read Richard Balcom's book, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, Mike Lacona and uh, Gary Habermas, um, what is it? the a resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I I became a Christian again. And then it sort of made me forsake all of my theological, uh, all of my theological beliefs prior to then. And I was pretty much building my theology from the ground up. So, it, I mean, it, it wasn't like a, you know, a deconstruction of faith or anything. It was just like, if they weren't really good at turn in, in terms of like telling me like there's good evidence for this, maybe, you know, they, they weren't so good in terms of like delivering theological beliefs to me as well. So I just effectively built my belief system from the ground up. And with that, I became more ensconced in, in theology. And with theology, at one point I read Romans 13 and I was like, okay, well, you know, you, we all know what Romans 13 is. Cause you know, that's like the that really annoy that really annoys anarchists, Christian anarchists, because you know that tends to be the, we we hate we, we don't hate it, but it's just like well, people read Romans thirteen without reading Romans twelve. Yes, and it's like people just tend to take that pe- people just tend to you know just like a ooh a reactionary uh, citation of Romans thirteen. But after that, I was like, okay, well, how am I supposed to actually relate to you know the government to the state? I don't really I don't really know, and I just kind of adopted my, you know, my parents' beliefs, my, my parents' belief system. And so that kind of led me on into kind of researching, okay, what have Christians in the past, you know, thought about politics and all this, you know, all, the, all these different kinds of things. And so that eventually led me into reading, um, it's called um, The Politics of Jesus by uh, John Yoder. And I read that and I was like, oh, wow. Okay, then he seems like he seems like he doesn't really care for um government. <laughs> like he doesn't really care if it exists or not. And so I was like, okay, well, I didn't know I didn't know that Christians could actually take that could actually take that position. And he wasn't an anarchist. But after that, I I fell I, I came upon uh, Greg Greg Boyd. And if anybody knows Greg Boyd, he's um he, I think he actually did a forward for Keith Giles book. Um the I can't remember which one it was. But he is an anarcho pacifist. And so after a while, I just really delve into a lot of different political political understandings of of the Christian faith. But I didn't go into anarchy right then and there. I kind of delve into conservatism. And so that's where I was. And I was and I got to a point where I was like, okay, maybe the government, we don't need the government that much. And so I was a, I was a minarchist. And I was like, we need the government for these minimal, uh, for these minimal things in, in society for, you know, you know, like so, uh, for national defense courts and things like that. And then I, 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 I basically read Murray Rothbard's um, The Anatomy of the State. And that'll change your life. That will change, absolutely change your life. And I was like, Wait, we don't really need it. We don't really need it at all. <laughs> and so, and so I read it, and I was like, "Man, this really, I, I, it really made me understand what the state is." And it's, and, and you know, anarchists would say the state is effectively a gun, 
it's violence and everything that it everything that it does it must you know it's it's pretty much compulsion in its force and so after a while i was like okay how can i you know how can i i don't want to say morph it with my christian belief but i was like is it is this consistent with my christian faith and after a while through you know a lot of soul searching and whatnot i came out as a christian anarchist so that that's pretty much my you know the, down to the brass text that's pretty much my testimony i guess to my conversion of christian christian anarchy did you go from like conservatism straight to anarchy or did, or did you delve into like libertarianism first well i i kind of thought i kind of thought the libertarian party was actually it actually advocated too much government control because i was a minarchist and i was like well yeah, that's some of the things that I see that libertarian, like was, what really turned me off to the libertarian party was the very fact that like was his stance on abortion. And I was like, uh, I'm not really cool with that. And so I just, it just kind of, I, I would say I was a libertarian at that point because I was a minarchist, but I was just, you know, I was just a minarchist libertarian, but I was basically a libertarian before I, before I became like a libertarian anarchist. I just believed that the state was there for those minimal you know, for those minimal things. So I was a libertarian before then, though. And once you get state, you get more state and more state and more state and more state. There's, I mean, I I understand the the minarchist because uh, I was. I mean, I guess I could call myself a minarchist at one point, but you don't. There's, it's there's still a state. Even as a minarchist, there's still a state. You know, and what we do with as as Christian anarchists, you know, we're no king but Christ. Period. I mean, there's there's no there's no backpedaling. That's that's what it is. We're no king but Christ. And so the you know the the minarchist stance, I guess, is more respectable than than others. But there's still a state. There's still a state that's going to coerce. There's still a state that's going to extort. And there's still a state that is if you don't uh, don't abide by their their rules, they're going to enforce they're going to enforce it at the point of a gun. Regardless, I don't care if there's a libertarian president ever. There's still going to be there's still going to be state enforcers with guns loaded, ready to put you in jail if you don't agree with them or if you don't do as they say. Brian, let's hear your story. I mean, truthfully, I can't be as humble as Ari and say I went through the hard, you know, processes as he did. Um, but thankfully, through our friendship, you know, with the ups and downs over nine years. I was there every time, like every little process and every step, you know, with what he believed, you know, the next thing and the next thing it was, you know, he kept going and going. Like I was there for each and every step pretty much. And there were a lot of things that he would discuss with me, like why I feel this way and like, why am I, you know, I believe this now and like, why this, this and this. And like, I mean, in the beginning, at first I'm like, what is up with this dude? This is, I mean, just who, who cares? It's just government, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, I had the sad background of being atheist. Like, I just really, years and years ago, like, when I first started out, I was anti-God. I, I hate him, you know. I, you know, the whole, I was really on the opposite side of the fence, you know, because I grew up with those, uh, I was forced in the church, you know, and I was forced and, you know, trying to believe things I couldn't possibly even understand, you know. So I kind of grew up thinking like, man, with my mom trying to get me on the boat, you know, I was like, you know what? I don't care about God, you know what? I don't even believe in anything. Who cares? You know, I'm just an atheist. I, I remember talking with Ari many, many times we would hang out like, man, I'm just an atheist. I don't care. Like there's no hell. There's no this. And there's like, I mean, all the other topic. But yeah, so I mean, I just really didn't care back then. And like I said, thankfully, I feel like God put him in my life so I could hear the things that he has to say. And like with each step, each process that he would explain to me. And like, I remember whenever I used to say that God doesn't exist, like he's just a figment of our imagination. Somebody just created the Bible. It's not even from God. It's not inspired by God. It's nothing, you know. And like, man, here comes Ari, like, bam, 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 like, bro, like, God is omnipresent. And like, he's just telling, he's just telling me all of these <laughs> things. And like, I would like come up with ridiculous questions for him. And like, he would, through the things he learned, 
And like he went from basic Christian that, you know, which is I'm just going to go to church, you know, on Sundays and that's it. You know, like he went from that to like, man, I'm just where you're at. Like I but I searched for my answers. You know, I went out and I got the answers like to the questions I had. So I would come at him like, man, this and this, like, I don't believe this or tell me this then. And like, if God is really real, then explain this. And he would like, well, hey, there's actually physical proof of this. And I'm like, man, this is blowing me out of my mind. So I don't know. It's just been a long journey. And over the years, it's just the things that I've heard. Like, I think it just started up with me before I really got saved that the obviously news, the things you see, like just the whole Black Lives Matter movement when it first started, like I'm talking like the very, very first like mention of Black Lives Matter and all that. Like I just remember seeing before I actually heard of like police gunning people down and so so on and so forth. And I was like, you know, it's they probably deserved it. You know, whoever did it, you know, like the police are here to protect us. You never I mean, I guess you just don't really question it. You know, it's the police are there. If you do something bad, then I mean, obviously they're doing whatever because you're doing something wrong. I mean, so you don't really question it, but I don't know. And then I've seen this thing on TV once about the black lives matter. And then like, I heard, you know, what happened and I, you know, you start seeing on social media, people telling their testimonies and how they feel. And like, it just really hit me like, man, like a police officer who is trained, you know, and Ari would explain this stuff to me too. Cause I had questions, but it's like, for real, these people are trained and like here they're over here claiming to be scared because a man's reaching for something, you know, or like, I don't know. And it's, it, it kind of really started from there. And then like that's when I started really opening my eyes to, I guess, the government and the system. And then Ari would kind of help fill in the gaps as to where I lacked, if that makes sense. And I mean, I'm not really I guess you could say I'm piggybacking a little bit, but like I can't deny the things that Ari has told me and even the things that I've seen for myself. Cause like the things that I see Ari is like pretty much right there, like confirming it. I'm like, Hey bro, like this, this, and this. And I'm like, okay, well I can't even come up with nothing. It's like, man, like he's really hit the nail on the head here. So well, let me, let, let me ask you something and, and then I'll get Ari's opinion on this as well. But have you noticed recently with everything going on with the, with the protest, have you noticed more people waking up to the, the black lives matter? aspect of it i i i can say that i have because and i'll be honest when when it first came out i was one of those guys like wait a second all lives matter oh that was me that was definitely me i, I yeah, would say yeah. that i said that i was like wait a second why do just black lives matter my life matters too <laughs> yes i, I was know? there i was there but oh, yeah but there's something different about black lives matter like yeah. there's because and people will say this well cops kill white people too well yeah yeah yeah. but white people aren't upset about it for some reason (laughs) it's it's true it really is it really is like because i saw a post on facebook they'll like throw out stats well this many white people have been killed by the cops this year and this many black people have been caught killed by the cops this year and they're like so more white people being killed by cops but no but but the white people we're not like we're not upset about it for some reason and we should be. We should be out there protesting white people getting killed too. You know, there was a. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Duncan. Is his name uh, Duncan Limp in, in Baltimore? Yeah. Got murdered by a SWAT team in Baltimore while in bed, laying next to his pregnant wife. He didn't have a gun, nothing. They just shot through his window, and but nothing said it. No white people were not upset about it. And I don't. And I don't. And, it, and when I when I saw somebody make that point on Facebook, though, I was like, "Wait a second, she's right. Why aren't white people upset about getting murdered by the cops?" And y'all are gonna have a different perspective than me, obviously. But it, do, do you think that it's it's, it's targeted, or do you think it's? Uh... I don't think it's. I don't think it's targeted necessarily. I did, this is what I really do think because I. I wouldn't say like even in terms of in terms of the government, I think the vast majority of people who are in government, they really do believe that they're doing good. They really do believe that they're, that they're doing the right thing. And even in terms of people who are even in terms of people who are, you know, in this particular situation, they're overstressing the racial the racial aspect of it. And, you know, and they're, you know, at, at they're 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 basically just 
kind of a push into the side that, you know, the, the fundamental problem is state violence and you know, they have a monopoly on violence. I really don't believe that like they're trying to do it. I just think that they do it because they're status. And, and you know, it's just it's just a natural react it's just a natural reaction, a natural reaction to the entire situation. So the natural reaction is, okay, ra- there's racial tyranny in terms of this situation that's obviously there, maybe. I mean, not maybe, not obviously, but it's maybe there. But then the very fact that statism is so is so assumed in in our culture the prob the fundamental problem is just swept us it's just swept to the side it just swept you know it just pushed aside and i think i mean i think that's what the fundamental problem is i just don't think that is you know that they that they try to do it and that or that it's i mean maybe some of them do but i think for the most part they don't try to do that you feel me with the whole race aspect of it and this is one thing that it that drives me crazy about collectivism is you when you start and i and there's racist people in this world i get it but when you start grouping people as a collective instead of focusing on the individual collectivism makes the individual disappear yeah i was talking to a guy uh you know the guy was telling you about i sent your music to and i sent you his music and we we talk about this a lot at work man and we started talking the other night and i was like I said, man, I said, collectivism is evil. I said, I can, I can sit here and talk to you as a black man, but I don't see you as a, I just see you as a, a person. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see, and maybe I'm different in, in that aspect from others, but I just, I don't, I don't recognize that. I just talk to a person, an individual person. Yeah. I mean, honestly, for, for, us, I mean, cause you, Brian, Brian is black as well. Well, he's, he's. He's biracial. He's biracial. You know, whatever that means. And so, I have a niece and nephew that are are, are biracial. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think for us, I, I don't. I really don't. And I'm not going to say it's a privilege. I just think that, you know, white people tend to have, like, they don't really necessarily have the have to um, think about their race so much. But black people do, and I don't want to. But it's just the fact that it's with it's embedded within our culture that we have to think in terms of those. Not necessarily exclusively in terms of those group uh, identities, but we, but almost we're forced to do it. And so it's like for me, I'd rather I'd rather see people as individuals, and I do see people as individuals. But at some point, when you when it gets down to the when it gets down to the fact is that our communities and the people that we are around and our family members and 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 you know a lot of our friends who are black, they see society through that through that lens even though i don't want to so it's it it almost forces us to have to like you know kind of partially see society through the race of man through the lens of race and i I mean i don't want like obviously we don't want to do that but it's just the people that are so that are around us it's just our culture it sort of forces us to have to do it you know well what do you think drives that though i mean is it is it the state is it the media I mean, it's really hard to say. I, I just think it might be media. It could be, I mean, I don't know. My, I think it's really media because it just takes it out of proportion. It really does. And like, I mean, just social media in general, yes, like the memes and everything that goes crazy, but like also like news media as well. Like they just flash it out. Like they don't immediately say, um, you know, so-and-so was killed. It just... Like if a white man was uh, was shot down, it's not. It doesn't say you know, oh, white man shot down. You know, on TV, it's just. It's, but if it's a black man, it says a black man was gunned down today. You know, or it's just like right. Eh, I mean, what? I don't know. There's just certain. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's like just flat out out there, like just in your face. But it's just little key things that you just you kind of start picking up and you start seeing. And I, in my opinion, I think it's media. I'm, well, I mean, I agree with that because I. Anybody that has listened to me run my head <laughs> like I tend to do will see, will hear me blame the media for a lot of things that are going on. You, you saw it with coronavirus. I mean, the way they were just pushing it on everybody. Oh, yeah. And oh, you yeah. saw it, and now you're seeing it with, with these protests. They're just pushing it constantly, you know? Yeah. So they're, it, yeah. they are in your face about what's going on and they're and they're trying to dictate how this is going to play i i call them government channels they're government media 
mainstream media of crazy. That's why I don't listen to them because it, it drives me crazy. I, I would rather listen to a podcast or read something, you know, with a with a independent or, or just a different uh, view on it than what is driven by the mainstream media. Mainstream media is one of the worst. And I, I really do believe that they drive all of this on purpose. It's all about ratings. I would say it's media, but at the same time, like if you just if you just sit down because this this is what I had to do. But if you just like at one point I was a conservative, and you know you know the whole conservative talking points in terms of Black Lives Matter. Well, what about this? What about like you know what about the very fact that you know blacks blacks only account for like thirteen percent of the population, but they account for like fifty one percent of the murder. It's like okay, we get it, we get it, fine, but like that's not really listening to what black people are saying. So I had to sit down. And I was like, and I just listened to my brother. I just, li- I really listened to my brother. And I think what really drives it is the very fact that obviously there's racism in this country and we are, you know, with black people, we are obviously surrounded by other black people who have experienced racism, not necessarily racism that, that is, you know, that is a uh, perpetrated by the state but it's just racism as as is you know it's just racism that just happens in society and so that really drives a lot of the narrative for a lot of for a lot of black people because we well not we but like a lot of them feel as if like they have to because it's, it's so prevalent it's so prevalent in their life on a daily basis that they have to because we're so you know intertwined in terms of in terms of community we look at it and we say well look well Curtis is saying, um, having the same experience that I had. Okay. Then, um, Alma over here is having the same experience that I had. Oh, Ari, he said that he's, um, he's experienced race. He's encountered racism. And then Brian over here is saying that he's encountered racism. And then we sort of, I I think they make the fallacious uh, um, assumption that their experience and even the experiences around them account for the overall account for the overall thing that's happening that's happening in, in you know in in society. And so with that, that's the reason why you see it, you see like, okay, this particular thing with like the Ahmad Arbery case. And then you automatically saw people say, man, this is what black people have to go through every single day. But I mean that's not statistically what that's not statistically the case, but we are surrounded by other black people who claim to have these same experiences and so we i guess we made the fallacious uh leap that all of us have all of us may have had to experience these type of things on a daily basis and that sort of translates over into the whole police issue we see that these we see that these racist things happen to us all the time and then we send we tend to translate those those, you know, those private personal slights by, you know, racists who don't have a badge. And we tend to think, well, obviously that has to happen on a state level as well. And I think, I think, I mean, it's a, it's probably a fallacious, it's probably fallacious reasoning, but I think I, I, I would say that I can see like the reasoning behind black people tend to, uh, tending to make a lot of this stuff about sp- exclusively race. You said something that's very important. And when you said you sat down and you just listened, just listened. And I think that's very, we, we need to do that. We need to sit down and listen instead of just going off of our own, on our own ideas about what's going on. We need to sit down and listen to each other. Exclude the state. The state's going to do what the state's going to do. They're going to drive what narrative they want. The media's going to drive what narrative they want. No, I want to talk to Ari. I want to talk to Brian. I want, you know, I, I, Let's let's have a conversation. Let's sit down and talk to each other about this and tell the state to get bent. Tell the media to get bent. They intentionally divide us. And there's a reason why if they can keep us divided, there's no way we can be united. And if we were united, if we were talking to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, or even if, even if you're not a Christian, if we were talking to each other as individuals as to each other, and tell the state and media to get bent. Man, they can't stop us. They cannot stop us. There, there's way too many of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When it, when it, when it comes to, to us, there's way too many of us than there are of them. There's no way they can stop us if we just sit down and talk to each other and tell them to leave us the hell alone. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I just... I mean, my my main thing about it is like, okay, how will we really reach that? Like, I mean, I'm going to be 
come out a little humble here and just say like like man it just seems impossible like there is a lot of us and there's a lot of people that see the nonsense you know and like but okay let, let's just take this for example like we got us right here you know and whoever else like tunes into these things and whatnot and like we're all together okay we we support the fact that what we believe but like okay let's take um what just happened like the man died like just put his knee on his neck killed him okay yes but like i'm saying the people just went crazy with this and i mean okay black lives matter is starting to get all serious okay but like i was literally telling my wife this the other day like i don't really tend to jump into social thing like social media or just news outlets either like you said i mean i don't really want to you turn on the news and it's just immediately like they're feeding you negative stuff like all day, every day. And like, I just, it's crazy to me. I just, I can't, you hear it through the grapevine, things that are going on in the world and so on. And I heard about what's going on. I heard about what happened and my wife told me, and I just really, I don't know. It, it just, the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, this man was wrongfully killed and the news outlets, media or whatever, like as anybody can say right now, like I'm pretty sure the whole world's seen it. It's like, oh, he was a nice, the man that died. It's like, he was a nice man. He lived a good life, you know, this, this, and this. I don't understand how we, the people who are fighting against the state or who are fighting his government, who are like, we see the wrong. And like, you just say, okay, this was a good man. Lived a, he probably did some wrong things in his life. Who knows? But it's like, he was wrongfully killed. Like, he deserves justice. Let me go loot a store. That don't make no sense. To, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I, do you hear like how crazy that sounds? Like, no, it feels like the fact that nobody is on board with the way I think it, it just make it drives me crazy. It's like, why is this even a thing right now? I mean, I get it. I do believe there's injustice police. I, un, I totally agree with that. I totally agree. I totally agree. But like, it's not just what happened, you know, just these deaths. It's just the government in general, like there's things going on behind the scenes that nobody really looks into. But like, how do you take that information? Say it's wrong. You know what? I'm going to go steal some stuff. Like I'm going to loot. I'm going to burn the city on, set the city on fire and that'll show them like, yeah, that'll, this is it. And I don't mean no disrespect or anything, but I just, how can this show respect? to you know the man that that died or the people that has already died and like black or not i'm just saying like even those white people like even if they this did turn up and like uh blow up into a big you know white lives matter thing instead of black lives matter like let's say it was the uh, white people out here marching and protesting instead of black people like would they still be looting stores <laughs> i just don't i don't know like it just seems like would people still be looting stores and like just flying off the edge breaking the law for no no reason it's not really going to do anything i mean in my opinion well i think what happens is you have nefarious actors in all of this like i think the the protests were legitimate yeah of course of course and there's a reason to protest we should be protesting the government every day but the but what happens like you said why are we out looting a store burning down a store you lose legitimacy when that happens like if we just protested what was going on, peacefully protested and made made our voice loud as we can without tearing up property, then people are going to listen more. Now what happens when you start burning down stores, that's what people are going to focus on. They're not even going to focus on your message anymore. You've lost your message when you do that. Yeah, there's just a group of people just, okay, what happened was bad, but like these group of people are just, at, you know, acting out like way too irrationally right now like they're just there's a point there's a line of quit okay but like i mean i understand that this can't really be peaceful i mean i understand that people might be most people probably are really frustrated especially i mean i'm half black i mean half privileged i guess you could say you know whatever but i mean like i, I grew up with already my whole life and like i never it's just like we discussed earlier, like you never look, you know, at the skin and everything like that. Like we literally call each other brothers. We've known each other. For, that's a long time. Nine years. Come on. That's that's a long time. Like we, we really literally grew up together and become men together. Like we got families together. Like I can't look at her and be like, oh, this man black. Like I just. <laughs> my whole vision has changed. You're a black man, Ari. Like that hasn't changed. Like he's still black. So it's just like, but I don't know. I just don't understand how. I mean, I'm 
I guess to come back to the point where I was getting with uh, the whole discussion there was just how how do you think that we can get to that when people are doing this? Like there's something wrong. And you just like you said, you know, there could be a peaceful protest. But like, what are we what can we do to like. I mean, get to that peaceful protest, you know, where we all stand together firm and strong instead of like, you know what, let's go rob, you know, we're not allowed to rob, but, you know, loot and so on. Like, what do you think we could do to get to that point? I think the the fun the fundamental issue, and we we can we have to continue to stress this. You know, Eric Eric July he said, "I concur with this from the from the depths of my soul. Racism without statism is nothing but a bad idea." So the point is, if you get rid of the state, if you just get them out of the, if you you just push them out of the picture, inevitably. Those these conversations that we're having are going to become more peaceful, and they're going to become they're going to become they're they're going to become better accessible to everybody. So people won't people won't have to you know start avoiding these kinds of, uh, avoiding these types of conversations. And it's set, it, it, this is I, I really do believe that the state is fundamentally the issue. So if you get the if you get the state out of it, people will start understanding that it's. <laughs> It's the state that was exasperate that was um a, that was pretty much exasperating the issue. Like you don't have you don't really have police brutality without um if a state is not there. So how about you take you pretty much take that ring of authority and you and you throw it into Mount Doom and you do away with it and then you deal with racism on a personal a person to person basis. That's what I really think. Like if you really want to m- propel this conversation further you need to effectively get the state out of the way. Like it's going to be that buffer. And that's the reason why, you know, I, I talk about white liberals so much because white, you know, when it comes to black people in our community, you know, black people already think conservatives and Republicans are racist anyway. So it's like, okay, well, you know, it don't matter. Like it don't matter. It don't matter what, it don't matter what Trump says. It doesn't matter what, a you know, what um, any Senator or, politician or bureaucrat says who who claim to be republicans or conservatives black people are going to be like well you're wrong because you're i mean it's obviously is you know it's ad hominem but the point is is that they already think that they're wrong anyway so that's like 50 percent of my of my job already done for you know in terms of uh, in terms of talking to black people so for me the real problem and the real issue that's really standing that's really standing in the way is when liberals like perpetually make every single slight and issue that's going on in the black community about about our about our skin color and they really do do that and it's and you can see that like this is being perpetuated by the media because you know like 98% of um i i, I think this was like 98% of Joe Biden's um uh campaign campaign uh funds were in terms of media was donated by people who, who were on the left. It was like, you can clearly see that this is a leftist, this, this is a, a leftist narrative that is being, perp- that is being perpetuated and black people are falling for it. And so what I at least try to do is I try to, I try to get black people who, who will view it as a race issue. If we view it as a race narrative, I try to get them to understand that it's like, yo, these people ain't on your side either. Like they can say that they they only on your side in terms of race. They only on your side in terms of when you are being racially oppressed. But in terms of your other oppression, in terms of your all of your other rights being violated, they don't care. And they're going to become apologists for it. If you if you if you seek to even try to say, hey, look, maybe maybe the government who's fundamentally violates my rights because that's that's it, it has to in order for it to exist. Maybe that's the key problem. But as soon as you start saying that. You'll start seeing you'll start seeing white liberals say, "Well, you know, the state is necessary." So the very fact that it violates your rights in this way, it is it's, it's it becomes legitimate. So the whole point is what, what I try to do. I try to take the I try to take the angle where I say, "Look, man, I understand. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue against you about whether or not Republicans are racist. I don't care. I'm just gonna concede that um, Trump is a racist. Fine, I don't care. So how about the people who claim to be on your side when they perpetually argue for the suppression of your rights. I told you this. I, I told you this in messaging, or I mean, maybe it was on one of your posts, because this needs to be understood, what you're saying. 
because it's not talked about enough. You don't hear it. And I, and I, and I have so much respect for the fact that you, that you will stand up and say, look at this side though, the side that, that claims to support you. Why aren't you focusing on that as well? And, and you are very vocal about it on social media and I love it. And I wish more people would latch on to it and, and listen to what you have, what, what you have to say, because it's the truth. Yeah. So, you know what? Cause I, that's the reason why I won't go to another, pro, I won't go to another protest because I, I went to two of them. you right. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm protesting because, you know, this, this Floyd, this Floyd guy, he was, his life was unjustly taken by, by the cops. And I was like, I, I, so I can get, I can get by, you know, I can get, I can get with that. but. It didn't matter whether I went to, because I went to one in uh, Lakeland, Florida, and then I went to one that was like 15 minutes away from my house. Predominantly, pretty much all, like at least 50% of people who were there were white. And when you see, and the point is, is that they weren't just arguing for, they weren't just arguing for justice for Floyd. They actually came up there promoting socialism. They actually came up there promoting all of these different other laws. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. So not only do you guys, like take away from the very fact that this man unjustly had his life taken, but you guys are now also pushing more government and you're also pushing that there you're also pushing and you're making, and you're making it more fundamental than the actual problem. The very fact that it, the very fact that it was probably racially motivated. And so for me, it was like, man, like when I was just sitting up there and I was like, man, maybe like maybe they like maybe they're the problem maybe they're the problem here maybe they're the maybe they're the real obstacle in terms of getting in terms of getting a lot of black people to understand that the the real problem here is the monopoly on violence that the government has that's perfect i mean that's like i told you this has to be understood people need to recognize that part of it too i have a lot of of liberal friends on on facebook and they act just like what you were just describing. You know, the stuff they post, I don't engage it because it, it would be fruitless. They're not going to listen to me anyway because they probably think I'm a racist. Yeah. And, you know, and you know the good thing about it is, is that y- y'all can't call me racist because I'm already black. So y'all going to have to, y'all going to either, you like, you can't, you can't do the whole ad hominem attack and just call and just blurt out racism because that, that's just not going to work. And so, so that's the reason why I'm like, you know what? I would just say it because what they go like, what are you going to say? You going to call me a racist just because I'm calling you out? No, and it's like in black, and you know, and this is the reason. I was like, look, I, I, I only, I only started saying it because I actually saw that that approach was actually working. Like it was actually getting a lot of black people that I know. It was actually getting a lot of black people to understand it. It's like, yo, yeah, maybe, maybe the white liberals are actually are, like are really are really a part of the problem. And it was like, look, this is the reason, this is the only reason why I got to do it. You forced my hand because like, and the thing that really set it off was I was talking to this white, I was talking to this white guy and I, I know you, I think you saw, I think you saw my post when I said it, but we were talking about, um, the legitimacy of a cop violating my rights and me being able to defend myself from this rights, uh, this rights violator for this, from this aggressor. And he pretty much told me like, yo, if this cop is violating your rights and if you seek to defend yourself from them and even possibly take his life, obviously I don't condone it, but the whole point is that I'm trying to defend my rights. He said he would see me as the aggressor. And he, and the point is he's saying hashtag black lives matter right now on Facebook. I was like, do you not see how, how weird they are? Do you not see how weird they think? Do you not see how, like how conditional your rights are to them? And it's like when you start to see that, you'll start to be like, okay, they're really no friends of me. So I distance yourself from them. Now I, we could talk about this probably the, for the rest of the day. But I want to I want to talk about failed kingdoms for a little bit. You you posted the burning up song on your on your Facebook, and I think I told you before we started recording. I listened to it when I got home from work. Listened to it a couple more times, and I I, I was like, man, this guy's got a cool cool sound. You know, and, and, and like I said in the beginning, I'm a, a big fan of like old school rap, and I can see that with you. And I sent the song to our project coordinator, and I asked her, I said, "What do you think about maybe asking this guy? He's been following our project. What do you think about asking this guy to to see if he'd be interested in, in doing some music for our podcast? You know, because we just had some generic music that we picked, uh, you know, at the beginning, and 
but something specific to our message, something specific to what the bad Roman's trying to do. And, you know, the no king, but Christ. And she listened to the song. She goes, yeah, that sounds really professional. And she goes, this, this, this would be fun. And then I, and I reached out to you. I don't think we'd ever really talked, you know, b- b- before then, maybe just in passing on Facebook. And I sent you a message to see if you'd be interested in doing that. And you were very gracious and, 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 and agreed to do it. And the fact that it only took you a day to, <laughs> to finish, it was impressive to me because I was like, well, it's cool that he's going to do it. And maybe we'll have this done in about a month or two or whatever. <laughs> now, <laughs> two days later, Hey man, I got your song ready. I was like, Whoa, wait, well, let's hear it. Well, I've got to get it engineered first. So tell me what was your, what was your, what, you told me that you were an anarchist before you started Fell Kingdom, mm-hmm. right? All right. So, what was what was your inspiration to start this? I mean, where where did this come from? Like, y'all told me that y- y'all been doing music since you were in diapers. So, <laughs> but but what was your inspiration for for Failed Kingdoms? Yeah. Well, if you if you notice, it, it Failed Kingdoms, it, it, it kind of seems anarchist anyway, because before then, I really didn't. I really didn't see myself going the political route in terms of my, well, not political, but you know, yeah, well, political route in terms of my music. And I really didn't see myself like imputing my, you know, uh, impressing my, um, my, my understanding of anarchism to actually into my music because I was afraid actually, you know, the vast majority of people that I knew, even my, you know, the pastor that I, the pastor that I was under, you know, the elders that I was under, like I've, I've had conversations with them before and they're clearly not anarchists. And it's gotten to a point where a lot of these people will actually say that, like, yo, this is actually heretical. I, anarchism, like, your Christian anarchism is actually heretical because it leads to a breakdown of society. And I was like, oh, that's not what it is. But OK. But so <laughs> I, I just kind of I was very, you know, reserved about in, like putting my political views in, into my music. And so it actually got to a point where my wife just told me, she was like, why do you, why do you care what they say? saying? Like, why do you care what they're saying? It's like, it's, it's you, it, you. And like, actually, my wife is really, my wife is not vocal about politics. Like she's an anarchist too, but she's just not vocal about it on faith, like on social media and whatnot. So, but she just pretty much told me, she was like, look, people are going to disagree with you anyway. People are going to unfriend you anyway if they find out what you believe. So how about you just put it out there? Because like it's killing you on it's killing you on the inside to not actually write right. and make music about what you are passionate about. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And so, you know, I had at first I was like, OK, now I'm going to I'm going to try to start making music that involves that involves politics in some way, shape or form. And. I was like, okay, now, because I was, it was just me, right? It was just me at that point. And I was like, okay, well, not only that, I kind of want a name that kind of, you know, that kind of goes with, you know, this, this anti, this anti state, you know, Christian, Christian theological position. I don't know. So I was, so I just started thinking about different, you know, different names, different labels that we can, that we can use, well, that I could use at that point. And I was like, Hmm, what can we do? So I read a, a passage, a scripture, and it says, you know, Jesus, Jesus is um, speaking and he says, uh, uh, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. And I was like, hmm, hmm, that sounds, that sounds good here. And so like kingdom really stuck out to me. And I was like, okay, well, like we're, we're Christians and, like, <laughs> you know, we're a part of Christ's kingdom and his kingdom is not of this world. Christ's kingdom will never fade away. You know, crisis kingdom will never fail. So I was like, well, by by deduction, that kind of means that any any kingdom that stands that stands um, that stands opposing um, stands in opposition to it must necessarily fail. Maybe not now, maybe not in ten years, but it will eventually fall. And so, failed kingdoms is is making a theological is making a theological point in terms of okay, failed kingdoms means human governments and human states, they are inherently sinful and they will eventually fall because Christ is victorious and Christ's kingdom and Christ's kingdom will prevail. And it's also it's also a, an admission of um it's also an admission of our fallen nature. It's all an it's also an admission of like man, we we are all sinful 
and people kind of and people kind of view the very fact that we're sinful and we're prone to sin as a legitimate reason to um to establish a state in in and of itself. So we're 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 basically saying well we're we're basically saying look Christ's kingdom is the one that we ascribe that is the one that we subscribe to in every other kingdom because we're fall because we're fallen and because we um and because we are we are naturally opposed to God to God's kingdom it will eventually fall because Christ is going to be victorious in the end so that's what basically what fell kingdom says and what it stands for that's awesome man uh, i love it and i i got into listening to some of your other stuff and I'm obviously going to be partial to the bad Roman track (laughs) (laughs) just, just because, you know, but there's a song, the the song, uh, the peacemaker, Mm -hmm. man, that song, that song, I've listened to it over and over and over, man. I don't know if it's white starts, just the, just the, the message in the song is awesome. It might be one of my favorites other than the bad Roman track. And I, not to say that I don't like other stuff, but the Peacemaker, for some reason, dude, just just hits me. See, so it's like, well, a lot of people, a lot of people started talking to me. You know, a lot of people, you're like, yo, we listen to We listen to the song. I even have, you know, physical copies of the album and it's on, it's on my album. And, you know, I send it out, you know, I, you know, people bought it, you know, all this different type of stuff. And then they'll message me. And they'll be like, man, like the Peacemaker, bro, this is a really good track. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Keep listening. Keep listening to it. Keep listening to it. And it's, and so a lot of people were like, "Man, this really." Like after a while, they were like, "Yo, man, this really opened up my eyes." Man, it was like, like, man, if Christ really did say that we are to be nonviolent and we are to not respond and uh, respond to respond to evil and violence in kind, it's like that has a lot of that has a lot of implications for government because the government responds to dissension with violence and i was like yeah you get it you really get it good job you get it no i caught that i caught i think that's why i think that's why i uh i listened to it over and over because i caught that immediately why don't you uh tell us where people can find your music at you know where, where your platforms are you know where they can find you at on social media and stuff and if when y'all get a chance, everybody listen to this, y'all have to go check out Felt Kingdoms. You will not be disappointed. Even if you're not a fan of hip hop, go check it out. Because the message behind what Ari's putting out is incredible. And it and it needs to be heard from so many different people. But won't you go ahead and give us a ch- uh, uh tell us where, where we can find your find your stuff at? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Um you can find our stuff. Well, first you can you can look us up on um on Instagram at failed underscore Kings. Um, you can look us up on Facebook at fell kingdoms It's literally just fell kingdoms. Um, our stuff is also on pretty much all, uh, music outlets such as iTunes, um, sound, SoundCloud, obviously Spotify, uh, YouTube music, um, Apple music, Google play, Google music It's effectively everywhere. And I also, I mean, if you, if anybody happens to, find us in Polk County, in Polk County, Florida. I also have physical copies of my, uh, of my album, uh, Kingdoms Part Two, and The Peacemaker is actually on that album. And so you can find us, you can find our music effectively anywhere you can find music online. I'm going to get you to have to, I'm going to have to get you to send me a signed copy of that album because you're going to be big, dude. <laughs> I got this, you, yo, I will. This is, uh, this is, I mean, because, I mean, your sound is, is amazing and it really, like, you can really just just I, you can get into it. I mean, yeah, I want I want a signed copy of that album. And when Ari Spivey is on stage talking about no kings but Christ, <laughs> I'll be like, I got a signed copy from that dude. <laughs> Amen, man. I I, pre- I really appreciate it. All right, man, Brian, man, I appreciate you joining us and and being a part of this conversation as well. And. I really, uh, if you, do you have anything else you would like to add, Brian, before we, I'm going to let y'all go and let's see you can get back to your families, but do you have anything else you'd like to say? No, I just, I really enjoyed this experience. Like I said, it was the first time for me and, uh, I just like to say, you know, I'm going to be getting out there as well pretty soon. You know, this is just the talk alone is hyping me up just to get in my message and the things I want to say across as well. But I mean, this has really been another eye opener. Like it's just always an eye opener with RE. Like no matter, like we're a part of, we're, I'm literally in fail kingdoms and like just every time I see him, it's just more information, more knowledge. And it's just, I mean, 
I just I got a lot to say, and it's gonna be coming soon as well. Uh, that's why we're part of Fail Kingdom. So, well, let me know. Let me know, man. Maybe we'll have you on, and and we'll uh, we'll talk about that about your project as well. Hey, honestly, I honestly just love talking in general. Like this was honestly. I hope people, anybody that's listening to this right now, like the message earlier, like all the messages, just there's a lot of things going on right now. So it's really ugly out there. And like, we just really need to come together in Christ and just forget all the nonsense and like, just stand up for what we believe in. And that's honestly, like, that's fell kingdoms, like <laughs> tune in. Yep. For real. It's like, that's just what we're all about. And we, Hey, I, that's the one point I want to mention too, is that we, I restarted this, you know, because of what he just explained. And I joined in because of my beliefs, you know, uh, with Christ and whatnot, too. And I see a lot of things wrong and I want to get my message across. And I told him, like, what I really wanted to do was to reach that somebody. Like, honestly, Christianity came to me through uh, Christian hip hop. Like years ago, I I didn't believe, but it was because of Christian hip hop, like that got me, started me on my road. So I was like, man, I want to make music too. So I can eventually reach that one person, you know, like help inspire that person to come to Christ or like at least get some kind of like what you're explaining. Um, you just explained is what I'm getting to. Like you just said, you heard Ari and you said that like somebody else heard. And it's just like, they're like, man, this, this spoke to me. Like, wow. Like peacemaker. Like I understand now, like this, it, that's what like I'm trying to do too. Like, and that's just, I'm we were just really trying to reach people like that because the churches aren't really doing um you know they can't really get everywhere is what I'm saying and like I, we just want to reach people on that platform too and reach just those few people that maybe don't have an idea but we're you know we we're here to wake them up. I love that man. I love that and I, it, when you uh when you said that you want to reach that one person that one person you you reach that one person and that one person reaches two people those two people people will reach four people and that's what we're trying to do with this project as well if we can reach one person then it just it'll spread and and i love what you just said that one person i need one person to hear this and i need this one person to hear what we're talking about and we can change we can change some minds yeah i mean the one the real reason i said it is because like whoever's listening I was that one person. It took all it like it took Ari coming to me years ago and me not believing in nothing. And my whole life has turned around. Like I have everything I've ever prayed for. Like God has blessed me truly, truly, truly. And I've come woken up to a lot of things that's going on in the government and just all around me in the world. Like it's set God has set me on this journey. I and it took one person, one person. So I promise you, like because that one person was me. I hope that somebody, I mean, so yeah, I don't want to get all sentimental and stuff, you know? <laughs> oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. That's, that's... <laughs> I mean, Ari's in the background crying right now as we speak. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to let y'all go. And uh, I really appreciate it. This has been a fun conversation. We, we got into some stuff that I didn't expect to, but man, it's been a rich conversation and I appreciate both y'all's time and are you got something else? No, man. Just thanks for letting us come on. It it, it was a really fun experience for us. All right, guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome, man. Thank you. Fell Keenums. The Bad Roman Project. Let's go. Yeah. Left, right, left, right, left. We got our marching orders, man. Left, right, left, right. Would you rather left, serve God than right, serve Caesar, you know me? Right, I'm just trying to live what he said. I'm just trying to live what he said. I ain't scared, I will take one to the dead. Go ahead, I'm just trying to live what he said. I ain't scared, I will take one to the head. Go ahead, so it's safe to say that I'm bad. 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 Say I'm wrong, do as they do. I beg to differ, not with the blow. Calling it out, they blowing the flow. Walking it out, so give me some room. I find it funny how talking to bro. He told me how he was out on the road. Ran into cops, out in the groves. Went for the pot, locked and loaded. Bro, they came at me cause I was black. Facts, they did the same thing to my dad. But 
but it's distraction, plot controlling. Where do they get it? Authority, quoting majority rules, sorority feeling, and never legitimate. And they be killing and killing without repercussions and cudgeling. Using their power, we struggling. Uh. No king, but one. And his kingdom is not of his world. Rather serve God than humans. So what are you doing? You over there clutching your pearls. Conservative, liberal, or in the middle. If you belong to Christ, you know what is pitiful. Demons controlling the state. It is pivotal, biblical. We will not bow to the enemy. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Dress the elephant in the room, I ain't talking Kelly. You think I played a fool for the hell of it, but it's for my benefit. You were part of a syndicate, a building of bitterments. And shattered your nemesis, talking with venomous. Ain't no defending it, uh, supporting extortion. Have your attention like wearing a corset, but really they standing on corpses. But you already know that it's still you endorse it, uh. Kids in the streets, they willing like porpoises. And corporatists are rallying for subsidies to buffer bids. It's so to enforce the trend. It don't really matter that I'm at a loss. I'm too big to fail, and all of this is far to pull out my politicians for my call. For I really paid attention to my father. The state is my God and got that holy water. Petty citizen, he think he a scoffer. I'm very strapped if he want to start. Stuff. Give me the cups if you want to cross us No king, but one And this kingdom is not of this world Rather serve God than humans So what are you doing? You over there clutching your pearls Conservative, liberal, or in the middle If you belong to Christ, you know what is pitiful Demons controlling the state of this pivotal Biblical, we will not bow to the enemy Left, right, left, right, left, right Thanks for joining us this week on the Bad Roman Podcast. You can subscribe to the show wherever podcasts are found. And if you like what you hear, be sure to leave us a rating, as it is the best way to help other people find us. 100% of donations to the show are given to local charities in Memphis, Tennessee. To learn more about this week's guest and how you can support the show, please visit thebadroman.com. 